When I was growing up in Poland, I was born in 1975. I left Poland in 1992. And when I was a kid, it was a totalitarian state, especially around the time when Poland went into the state of emergency. I remember on that day actually traveling from a little village where I was staying with my grandparents to a city where my home was and uh, where my parents were. And I was traveling with my uncle and my aunt. Uh, and we decided to stop at their house and spend the night. Uh, and I remember waking up in the morning and there was this announcement on television that Poland is going into the direct kind of translation into English would be into the state of war. And so we were not allowed to leave that town because you needed a special government permission to travel. And overnight, there were tanks on the streets of our cities. TV presenters and news people were wearing military uniforms. And it was very shocking. But this was just another manifestation of what felt like violence from the state. And so growing up, I was very much aware of this dynamic that we were born into a world, into a situation, into a country where everything was so tightly controlled. What was kind of present in our hearts, there was no room for that. The only free places were really churches where we could go and articulate our dreams, where we could talk about a different world that we imagined a world of justice and solidarity, a world that valued things like reciprocity and freedom of speech. Growing up, I saw what some of my friends, especially older friends, were doing in order to deal with that situation. And many of them were just drinking themselves to death, literally. And that was their way of coping with the violence, coping with the hopelessness, coping with just feeling stuck. And yet there was this movement happening in Poland, the Solidarity Movement, which was a non-violent resistance movement. And paying attention to that, I saw that it was possible to make a different choice, that it was possible to organize with other people, small circles where we could share together some of the dreams that we had for the kind of life that we wanted, for the kind of world that we wanted, and that those dreams then could translate into a new political system. For many people, social change is more of a theoretical longing for me, it's not because I saw one system collapsing and a new system emerging. And so that's why I tend to say that there are two choices. One was to become an alcoholic and another choice was to become an activist. But in Poland, most of the activism that I was exposed to was very much rooted in spirituality especially it was connected to the Catholic Church because in Poland at that time most of the people were Catholic, Catholic or communist. And so as a child I was able to witness some really courageous people, some of whom were priests, who seemed to have a special connection with the divine. And whatever they were experiencing in their prayer life translated into something that enabled them to speak truth to power, something that enabled them to say, even though you're trying to kill me, even though most likely you will kill me, just so you know, I forgive you because God forgives you. And that was a very powerful experience for me to witness that. And of course, some of those guys got killed by the state, including a priest in a parish where I was baptized. He was one of those non-violent resistance rebel priests, and he was killed by the state. And that happened 
almost at the end of the regime. He was one of the last victims of the state. Just so we would know that they are still in charge.